Let's uh let's close out with some college basketball conference tournament picks. Uh, we we've been doing this every season, heading into conference tournament week, and of course it is March Madness. We got a bunch of them going on, right? We're going to focus on the the main six, and that would be the ACC, the Big East, the Big Ten, the Big Twelve, the Pac twelve, and the SEC. Uh, normally in these spots, it is not valuable to bet on the favorite. Yeah, we kind of yeah we kind of this year. Woo! Oh yeah, for sure. This year, if you bet in chalk this year, you got balls. Usually, usually it's the easiest thing in the world to do. This year, good luck. I have made. Uh, let's see, 12 bets thus far. Uh, only one of them is actual chalk, but we'll uh, we'll get to that one here in a minute. Let's start off with the first, and that would be the ACC. Now, it, the way that the bracket sets up here uh, is a little, little crazy because, of course, we start games on Tuesday with the ACC. Then you move into second round, and then you've got the teams that all had buys on Thursday. Uh, Duke is the one seed, Miami the four seed, Notre Dame the two seed, North Carolina the three seed. The ones that I have on this, that I have gone on and put down my bets on, I went ahead and took North Carolina at plus 800, and I took Miami at plus 1,200. Now, Miami is playing, uh, they are the four seed, and they would end up having to play against Duke in Barclays. Obviously, that's not uh, ideal, but once you get through Duke, uh, you've already... You've already had Notre Dame and North Carolina and whatnot. You you could handle one of those in the next one. It, you've only got to win uh, against Wake Forest, Pitt, or Vol- uh, Boston College in order to get to the Duke game. I think Miami, plus 1,200, they have shown that they can play really well away from home. I like Miami a lot. And North Carolina is, I don't know that there's a team in the ACC that's been playing better than them down the stretch other than Duke. And they just handled Duke in Coach K's you know final game at the uh, uh, Cameron Indoor. So I, you know, those two seem like uh, pretty reasonable bets, especially at plus 800, plus 1200. Uh, is there anybody else that you're looking at here? You know, Notre Dame, well, what, maybe? What are, yeah, I was going to say, what are Notre Dame's odds? Because that was the team that I was looking at also. But I, it wouldn't be Duke, it's not Shaw, but it's going to be one of those three. I don't like anybody else in the ACC. This is a down year for the ACC. <laughs> I am, uh, let's see, I'm looking at the ACC right now. Notre Dame is plus 800, so same as North Carolina. Yeah, yeah I, could, I, would, I think I'd take Notre Dame over North Carolina only because I think North Carolina might be just coming off such a big high um, that I think they're they're poised to get got. It's entirely possible. Um, and, then, would... and then I just don't like the idea of chalk. So I think North Carolina, I mean, uh, Notre Dame has, has, in my eyes, you know, I, I like that. I'll take that. Well, Notre Dame is the two seed for a reason, right? I mean, they are, yeah. it, but a two seed at plus 800 seems a little crazy. They've got Duke at minus 150. Well, yeah. and, and I think the reason for that is because it's Coach K's last ACC tournament. You know, that well, is, yeah, that's not a that's guarantee. Right. Everybody, every every Chalk fan in the world and every Duke fan in the world are going to lay large sums of money on Coach K and Duke. That's it. That This is, this is just betting against that. And I'll tell you this, I, I might take North Carolina, because we think North Carolina and, and uh, Notre Dame are going to play one another for the championship game, right? The way the bracket shapes up? Uh, well, the way that it shapes up, North Carolina and Notre Dame would play each other. It, it would be Duke against uh, Notre Dame or North Carolina for the championship. Okay, so so if, if we kind of get chalk, if I don't believe in anyone else, if you're betting on Miami, Miami's got to get through Duke and then get through one of North Carolina or Notre Dame. I think I would rather make a wager on both at plus eight hundred. If I get eight to one odds, I'm basically getting four to one odds betting on uh, North Carolina or uh, Notre Dame. Hey, you got a point there. You do have so a I point. Would there. Take, I would take. I would take that is what I would. I would rather do because I do think the winner of that game is winning it, and I think those odds, or even if they don't win it, I just think the odds of four to one are just too good to pass up. You might be right about that. Uh, the Big East. The Big East Conference Tournament. Uh, it begins on Wednesday. Uh, you got your 8-9 matchup, Xavier and Butler. You got St. John's against DePaul, Seton Hall against Georgetown, etc. Uh, but your your top seeds here. Number one, Providence. Number two, Villanova. Yep. Number three, UConn. And then Creighton and Marquette are the four and five, and they're playing each other on Thursday at 2.30 Eastern. Um, I, 
I like Villanova here at plus 150. I mean, they're the two seed, but they are they're the most talented. They've played really well down the stretch. Uh, but the team that I've well, and got, they, and they got the they got the coach with the pedigree. Oh, that's most certainly. I, I don't like the that's plus one hundred and fifty because I mean, no, that's a short number. Yeah, it, it, very very short. But that's almost a favorite number. What is Providence? Uh, they got to be close to that. Well, Providence is the one seed, but they're plus four hundred. Right? It, their metrics are are so wacky and uh, compared to the results. Yeah, so Villanova right? is the favorite to win it. That's the yeah. chalk to win it, regardless of the seed. Most certainly. Most certainly. Yeah. Um, UConn is plus 325. Providence plus 400. Marquette is plus 800. And I the one that I like right now is Seton Hall. Uh, they've won five straight. They are playing lights out right now. Um, nobody is talking about them. And I know that they got to play a Wednesday game against Georgetown. But Georgetown has not won a single Big East game. So they'll, they'll well, play yeah, against... Georgetown's over in the conference. Yeah, it's I don't that hadn't been done in so long. I mean, they were going through all the record books like it, this is this is absurd. This is why you hang on. What did I tell you? This is why you don't hire heroes. Yeah, I mean they, they made it. They won at some them. point in time. At some point in time, somebody's going to have to have a very hard and uncomfortable conversation with a legend, a god yeah. at Georgetown. Well, and they they just had to do it with John Thompson the third, right? Like it. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's no, just that's absurd. It. Like you just, you just fired one god, and and the other god, you're you're about to have a really uncomfortable conversation with. Yeah, they're saying that he's going to be back next year, but yep, no, you know, that's right. We'll see. We will see what ends up happening. Uh, but yeah, Seton Hall, you get through Georgetown, then you got to play UConn, then you would probably have to play Villanova, et cetera. Uh, but if, if getting Seton Hall at plus twelve hundred. Like, I, I feel all right about that. I feel like I could, you know, maybe make a way uh, in there because Seton Hall has played insanely good basketball here lately. If, if you look at uh, Bartorvik, uh, his ratings since the beginning of February, Seton Hall is number two in this league. I mean, they are playing lights out right now uh, as far as advanced metrics go. So, yeah, it's a tough road, but, you know, I don't think it's any more difficult than Villanova having to play either UConn or Seton Hall in the next round. Um, you know. We'll we'll see where it goes from there, but uh, but yeah, uh, what, do you see value for uh, for anybody on this one? Well, I, I, I what, what was Marquette's number again? I like Marquette. Marquette is a plus eight hundred. They got to beat Creighton and then Providence, <laughs> and then you'd probably handle Villanova, UConn, or Seton Hall. Yeah. So I, if I if I had to take a long shot, I would like Marquette. Um, I also like UConn. I I actually think UConn is, you know, what are they like three fifty to one. Uh, three twenty-five. Three twenty-five. Uh, yeah, I, I would. I would probably make those two picks. I would probably make a make a wager on 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 UConn and Marquette. All right, we'll move on to the Big Ten. Um, I'm going to tell you the two that I like the most in this one. Uh, the Big Ten. I I like the way that Iowa has been playing here lately. They are plus yep. plus four hundred, and then Wisconsin. So long. As uh, who is it, Johnny Davis? Uh, so long as he is healthy, because he got injured in that last game against Nebraska, they lost. They lost an outright Big Ten title at home to Nebraska in the last game of the season. But uh, but things went a little crazy there. It, that that can that can happen here and there. Um, I, I like Iowa. Iowa is the fifth seed uh, at plus four hundred, and I like Wisconsin. They're the two seed. Uh, Wisconsin would have to play the winner of Michigan State, Maryland. And then they would have to play uh, Purdue or Ohio State, most likely, uh, before you even get to the championship game, which, you know, who knows what's going to happen on the, the top side of that. But I, I like Iowa plus 400 because they, as far as metrics go, they have been the best team in this league over the last month and a half or so. And Wisconsin, all you get from them is results. Like, they they have beaten everybody in this field and – and done it, you know, semi convincingly. They don't win every game by a ton of points, but but Wisconsin's been really, really good, and they've got a closer in Johnny Davis. Man, I I love these two teams with maybe the two best players in the league. And I understand you can talk about Jaden Ivy at Purdue, et cetera, et cetera. But I, those those are the two where I actually saw value. Um, who uh, who in this one do you like? I'll uh, I'll read you some stats or some uh, some odds. No, 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 I don't need. I don't need. Uh, what 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 is the number for Izzo? Uh, let's see. Michigan State is plus sixteen hundred. Take it. I right, see so you would take Izzo plus sixteen hundred. That's a long shot because 
I'm, it, we're getting to the tournament time, Gary. This isn't about stats. This isn't about analytics. The game is going to completely change when you get into tournament play. And I will take Tom Izzo over the field in coaching in this conference, and it ain't close. Michigan State, uh, let's see. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Uh, as far as advanced stats over the last nine games of the season, uh, number eleven out of fourteen. They went three and six down the stretch. Yep. That's, that's the only hard. thing that, that scares me about it, right? I, I get it. I, like, once again, this is not about stats, it's not about analytics. This is about a guy that's been doing it longer and I've been alive. That's a, yeah, you got a point there. <laughs> that's that's it. <laughs> All right, so Izzo plus sixteen hundred. All right, I, I can get down with that. I can get hey, down what, with that. What a, what a produce! What a produce stats. If I was going to take somebody that was a little more chalky, what a produce number. Oh, Purdue That's is the that. Purdue nah. is the chalkiest. Uh, they are. Oh, are so they really? They're the number three seed, but they are plus one seventy five. Oh hell no! No, I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't do that. No. All right, and then they, I'd probably follow you with Wisconsin for the other play. Yeah, I, I like Wisconsin. I would do something safer. Iowa has come on as of late. Um, they they went eight and two in their last ten. Like in in I know they lost at Illinois on a last second shot uh, on Sunday night, but still, I mean they lost by two at Illinois when Illinois had a chance to to win a Big now, Ten championship. Here's the other question: What are Michigan's odds? Michigan is sitting at plus fourteen hundred. They, they I get might, Dewan I Howard might. back. Yeah, I'm about to say. I I might I might not play that Wisconsin. I might I might take both Michigan State teams, the uh, Michigan State and Michigan. Michigan plays Indiana in uh, the first game on let's see March tenth. So what would that be uh, Thursday? And then yep. they would have to play number one seed Illinois, uh, and then either Rutgers or Iowa after that. Or I mean Nebraska. Nebraska hadn't lost in I don't even know how many games. So who knows what'll happen from uh, from the Wednesday stuff, but. Yeah, I could uh, I could see Michigan getting there, a hundred percent. I mean, that would be my place. Yeah, you it, big odds, big big odds. Yeah, those those would work. Those would work. Uh, the Big Twelve. Let's see. Uh, man, I'm not gonna lie. I don't like anybody other than Baylor and Kansas, and both of those are chalky as hell. Um, what? What? All right. So the only team I'd take, the only one I'd take. What is the end of the three seed? What is Texas Tech? Texas Tech, who has not played well down the stretch, Texas Tech is plus three seventy five. So they're they're number three as far as the odds go. Three seventy five is not a good enough price. Yeah this this would be a this would be a stay away completely for me. I wouldn't bet anything in here. Yeah, that's a, for me. Like I I took a little bit on Baylor at plus one seventy five, but I I don't like Kansas because that they don't have good point guard play. Uh, but Baylor is still missing LJ Cryer. I don't, you know, I just I, I don't think that Baylor's going to be uh, great. But I could I could totally see him winning yeah. this tournament because I don't expect them to win a national championship. So, so yeah, that's uh, that's the only way that I'm going with that one. Uh, let's look at the Pac-12 really quick. Is there anybody other than Arizona, UCLA, or USC for you? Probably not. Probably not. So Arizona is minus one thirty. UCLA is plus one seventy five. Uh, I will tell you one that I I put down just a little bit of coin on, and you're going to find this ridiculous. Uh, Arizona State is plus ten thousand. Uh, they and Colorado and and of course Arizona are the hottest teams in the Pac twelve right now, and it's it's really not close. Arizona State won seven of their last eight. They have played everybody tough, even the ones that they ended up losing to. Uh, Arizona State has been bad for pretty much the entire season. But if you look, they they are number three as far as advanced metrics since February the 6th. Now, that's behind UCLA and Arizona, but they have beaten UCLA already, and they played tight with Arizona just uh, about a week and a half ago. So, you know, the the bracket doesn't exactly break out great for them uh, because Arizona State opens up with Stanford, who lost like five straight to end the season. Uh, but then they have to play Arizona, and they would likely have to play the number four seed Colorado, who has also been, you know, really good down the stretch. Uh, Colorado into the year six and one in their last seven. So, you know, um, I mean, Colorado at, at plus 4,000 is not bad. 
And uh, in Arizona State at plus 10,000, uh, you know, it might be worth dropping, you know, a couple bucks on. So plus 10,000 is pretty crazy odds for a team that uh, that came into this thing just red hot, right? Yeah, no, that's that's, that's, that's a pretty good number. And yeah, I mean, it's probably worth it. I mean, you know, the old, you know, Kevin from the office saying, if anybody ever gives you plus 10,000 odds, you just take it. Yeah. But especially, I mean, this team won seven of their last eight. And and have looked good. Like, don't get me wrong. Arizona State uh, has been bad, like for the majority of the season, right? Uh, their overall record is fourteen and sixteen. But I mean, you go on a streak there at the end. <laughs> I mean, they've got to win over UCLA. Um, well, yeah, we've had teams that made the tournament doing this, just going, go getting hot and going on a run at the end. It's yeah. happened in the past. Oh, most certainly not outside of the realm of possibility. So. No, you are not wrong. No, I don't like. I don't. I don't. I don't like anybody else in this conference. This is like the Big Twelve. Like, th- there's no interest here at all. I do not care. There's no, not a bet it. that I like. There's not a wager that I like or an odd that that I think is any any leverage in at all. Uh, let's do the SEC. Now, the SEC. Uh, this one, you know, interesting, of course, because there are a lot of good teams in the SEC in basketball this season. Uh, the two that I like the most. And it's not the one seed or uh, the two or, well, no, it's not the one seed or the three seed, right? It's not Auburn or Kentucky for me uh, because those are the two that have, I think, the longest odds. I'm trying to pull it up here. Um, The ones that I do like, I like Arkansas a lot at plus 600, and I like Tennessee at plus 400. Uh, Tennessee is the two seed. Arkansas is the four seed, so they are on opposite ends of the bracket from each other. Auburn scares me away from home, right? They they have not played well on the road, um, but you can't deny their roster. I mean, they are really, really good. Kentucky should be getting Severe Wheeler back. They should be getting Ty Ty Washington back. So they should be pretty good. Uh, Kentucky would likely have to play Alabama in their first what, what round. What are Kentucky's odds? Uh, Kentucky is plus 200. Oh, man, that's short. And Ooh. Auburn Auburn is plus 275. So then, then you got Tennessee at plus four hundred and Arkansas at plus six hundred. Uh, Tennessee closed the year, I think, seven and one down the stretch. And let's see, Arkansas uh, won what fourteen or fifteen of their last seventeen or fourteen of their last sixteen, something crazy like that. So Arkansas has been uh, note for Arkansas is just a an absolute beast. Um, but Tennessee, mm, like, okay, uh, go ahead, go ahead. Tell me, tell me your thoughts here. Well, I think, I think, I think. A lot of that Arkansas resume is fraudulent. I mean, I think with Tennessee playing them this weekend, we saw that. Um, I, I'm a little bit jaded. This is very biased. Uh, that LSU game, LSU would have beat the hell out of them. Arkansas got about seven calls late in the last four minutes that all went their way. That I mean, some of these charge calls are blocking calls. Yeah, blocking and charge calls were pretty obscene, pretty ridiculous. And, you know, it's just, the SEC refs have made it clear they don't like Will Wade. They're just not gonna. They're just not gonna let him get anything. Um, so if you bet on LSU, you're wasting your money. That, that there's nothing they can do to win it. Um, I, I think some of those wins by Arkansas are a little fraudulent. Uh, the, when they played uh, Mississippi State, same thing. I think I think they got a shit ton of calls go their way that I think were all wrong. We're all bad. We're all poorly called. Uh, and and when they played Tennessee and they got a game where the game got called kind of straight up, <laughs> Tennessee kind of beat the hell out of them. So that's that's my only fear. I, I like the Tennessee bet at plus four hundred. Um, I do think Kentucky's probably I, it's it you know they're the two seed. Vegas got them as the odds to win it. Uh, I, I think that's the right call. But I wouldn't you know I wouldn't bet them or Auburn just because I don't like the odds. I would take Tennessee. That would be my play. Yeah, Tennessee at plus 400 makes a lot of sense. Uh, they, let's see, they won one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine of their last 10. Uh, yeah. and, and I, handled, I think Tennessee's one of the, you know, 13 teams in the country that I think can actually win the national championship. Whew. Uh, don't get me wrong. They, they certainly have, uh, I mean, they got good point guard play. They got play uh, down low. Fulkerson's great. Um, Kennedy Chandler at the point, like he's he's kind of coming into himself a little bit. I do like Tennessee a lot. Uh, I just I I wonder about this team playing away from Thompson Bowling Arena, right? 
And that's that's the one thing that we got to figure out about. Well, I mean, Auburn, Auburn hadn't played well on the road. I mean, and none of these have, teams have. These other teams played great on the road. Okay, then what does it matter? All and right. that's it. See, that's the thing is you're trying to figure out. So all, right, if all who, of them are bad at it or have been inconsistent at it, then you can't be afraid of it for anybody. And true. Uh, let's because see. it's a neutral point. Rising tide raises all ships, and and and, and, and it also lowers them. You let's know? see the the teams that are the best uh, as far as their record goes uh, away from home in the SEC since uh, you know since January first. Uh, Tennessee is five and four. Auburn is six and three. Kentucky is six and four. Arkansas five and three. Uh, let's see. LSU went two and seven. Texas A and M four and five. Alabama three and six. Florida four and five. You know, and South Carolina went four and five. So eh, who knows? Who knows? This uh this this could be a little a little interesting. I, the SEC tournament is always a little oh, bit of a crap. Yeah, I think it's gonna be yep. nuts. Like I I don't know that anybody saw Alabama and LSU getting to the championship game last season, uh, with the way that both of them finished down the stretch. Uh but you never know who can turn it on when they need to, right? Like that's that's the biggest thing here. Agreed. So Arkansas plus six hundred, Tennessee plus four hundred, and you you like the Tennessee plus four hundred there, uh, but you don't really see anybody coming from out of the woodworks. You know A and M is plus five thousand, and I, I was I was just about to say A and M and and South Carolina, those are the two, and it's only because they have coaches that I've seen make runs before. That would be a yeah. play on the coach, not on the team. I've seen them get hot in the tournaments and know how to coach their way through these things. And uh, and do it well. That, that, those would be what are those two lines? You got five thousand and what's South Carolina? South Carolina is plus twelve thousand five hundred. Yeah, like, like it's gonna be. I mean, these are these are obviously long, long, long shots, but that's what they are. They're long shots. Yeah. No. A and M finished out the year winning five of their last six. They went on the road and just destroyed Ole Miss and Alabama back to back on the road. Um, they they beat Florida at home. They the thing that scares me about A&M is they open with Florida on Thursday, and then they would have to play Auburn, and then you get either LSU or Arkansas. And that's before you even get to the championship game. But, but I mean, you're, you're saying all this because you're looking at numbers and you're looking at seeds. But we just talked about how all of these teams are flawed, and all of these teams are really good. And anybody could win this tournament. Yeah, no, you're, you're case, not wrong. You can't play the game of, well, they got to play this team. Well, then they got to play that team. Well, Auburn has shown they can lose on the road to anybody. That so, is true. What does that matter for playing Auburn second? Uh, it doesn't necessarily matter. It's just uh, having to play Florida the day before you play Auburn and then having to go play I don't know that, don't know that, that matters. Florida, Florida's been one of the most disappointing basketball teams I've seen all year. So, yeah, but, they, but they've been that, like that every every year under Mike White. <laughs> that That is one team that I don't think can make a run in the SEC. Yeah, no, I'd, I'd believe you there. Florida is uh, is also plus five thousand. So yeah, no, I'd, I'd much rather have South Carolina at twelve thousand five hundred than Florida at five. Yeah, I tend to agree. I tend to agree. All right, I think that's going to wrap it and up. And Florida might beat them, but they it might. doesn't matter. I'd still take the I'd still take the plus twelve. Yeah, I don't I don't take Florida to to actually win uh, the tournament. I mean, I, I just don't no think way. they can do it. I can't think they. I don't think they can string wins. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter at GaryWCE, at Chris B Giannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us Gary at winningcureseverything.com or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.